And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Shimano rods and reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Mexa, and Corey Sandin. And welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hookup, right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here with Corey Sandin co-hosting today with me and the amazing Ron Lane from Fast Lane Kayaks in Mission Bay. Talking kayaks, talking all kinds of fishing here, bluefin and uh, Dorado, whatever you want to talk. For surf fishing, the whole thing. Everything. Yeah, and... Uh, what a great show, and if you want to get through, uh, one line open right now, right, Corey? Yeah, only one line, and uh, it's yours right now for the taking, 213-432-1090. That's the telephone number here to Let's Talk Hookup. Or you can uh, send us a text. We've got a ton of text uh, waiting to read off for Ron here, and uh, you can do that only through the app, and it's a free download, super easy. You can listen to the archives, and like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go home and listen to yesterday's show. Yeah. Well, yeah, while I'm working, you can listen to shows six months ago. Yeah, and, and on can, the archives, can you Adam still, does such a great job. Somebody yesterday mentioned that uh, he had been listening uh, since the Marty days. And yeah, can, are are there archives back that far? I'm not sure that they go okay. back that far. Yeah, yeah, but we actually have on the app some classics. Okay, which involve uh, which involve Marty. Involved Marty. So okay. if you want to hear an old Marty show, go oh, to cool. the, the classic section on the archive, and you'll oh, hear a show. Great. You'll hear a show with Marty. Adam neat, does I, used a, to, I used to just. Right? Idolize that guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'd, I'd sit at the at the Fred Hall show yeah. looking at him and go, Oh yeah. That's Marty him. Milner. Yeah. Adam Twelve. <laughs> that's yeah. Right. You and all, all the guys in the L E P D too, right? Yeah, that's yeah right. for sure. Hey, Brandon Hayward from Bite Sport Fishing is on the line. Good morning, Brandon. Nice addition. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. You got me? Yeah, we got you loud and clear. What's going on, Brandon? Nice to hear from you. Oh, not too Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. Uh not too much. It's, uh going for a drive and tuned up the show and thought we'd call in with a little uh, fish report. Yeah, give it to us. Yeah, um, the classic thing in November, a lot of lot of opportunities, a lot of different things to do. You could probably say you have the most choices right now, but, you know, like I would say, for good reason, uh, interest wanes and people are on and off to other things, but we had... Hold on. I do. Um... We ran our last open party out of Fisherman's, and we had Limit the Yellowfin, and a uh, good sign of that bigger bluefin that's been around since April before dark. You got a 150-pounder on the kite. Whoa. And last couple lobster trips had Limit at Catalina. It's definitely been uh, better lobster fishing. I don't want to say it's 2004, 2005-esque, but it's definitely been, uh, been better there. And on the sword tip... Um, Seems like those things are just now kind of starting to bite and get with it. And uh, didn't have any bites on our trip yesterday. Jake had one that was 320 or 325 oh, a couple trips ago. So we're still <laughs> grinding it out on those things and hoping for uh, hoping for a couple bites on those here today. Wow, fantastic! And so bite sport fishing is kind of doing it all. And we have after this little storm, actually a big storm goes through, they're expecting. Two to four feet of snow in Mammoth. We Woo-hoo! heard last night. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. wow. So this is a bit. It's a big one coming in a cold storm too. But after that, you look at windy. It looks beautiful for a week. No wind and uh, perfect time to go yeah. uh, out there after Wednesday, I, I believe. So uh, time to uh, book. I, I how do we that. book a trip when we want to go fishing with bite? And uh, a little sidebar to that, you know, storms aren't always the greatest thing for a lot of types of fishing, like you know, dropping water temps. Tuna and Dorado, probably not the best. But for our kind of classic fall-winter fishing, squid, swordfish, getting water temperature breaks and things like this, it's kind of okay to get things kind of churned up this time of year, you know? Yeah. Uh, if you want to come out, we're, we're still run Every day that we're not chartered, we're online out of Fisherman's Landing for open party if you want to come check out the Freeman. And then uh, the, the 28 Parkers are doing, doing it all, too. Uh, swordfish, lobster, offshore, all that stuff. I, I think... We might be done with offshore here after this storm. We'll see. But uh, definitely going to focus on the swordfish, the lobsters. And in years past, we've had that beautiful fall white sea bass fishing in November. So Ooh. might do a goof-off trip here, too, and try to kind of find that stuff. Okay? 
Yeah, that sounds great. So you can book uh, the Freeman through Fisherman's Landing, right? Fisherman'sLanding.com or, yeah. or BiteSportFishing.com? Yeah, exactly. Or just uh, look us up and we're easy to find. Cool. Bite, B-I-G-H-T, BiteSportFishing.com, right, Brandon? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like the Southern California bite, exactly. Yep. All right. Well, great to hear from you. Glad you're getting them. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, we'll be having you on the show. We we'll look forward to having you on the show. I believe we're Jan- we have a January date set up, so we we'll look forward to having you and probably hear yeah. from you before that. Yeah. Keep, yeah. keep again, us I'm posted how it's going. On the show after the new year. Yeah, for All right, sure. Then, guys. See ya. All right. Thanks for the call, Brandon. Nice to hear from you. It's so crazy, Pete. I walk down the dock here and I see that Freeman he's talking about. Yeah, thing's amazing. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like if it was like had- forty. It's crazy. I yeah. mean, it, if you haven't seen it, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's worth seeing. For yeah, sure. it's pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder who won the casting contest yesterday. By the I way, I don't know. Good question. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. We'll and I saw out. the uh, the line, the eyes line contest going. Yeah, and people over there cheering and going we went, nuts. And, yeah, for man, sure. there was a. They were giving away Dallas and Rick over there uh, with a raffle. They yeah, were, they were giving away certificates for the Shogun. Just like all Mau- kinds of stuff. Maui Costa. Yeah. There was like so much. It wasn't just like, here's a pack of hooks. Or I mean, yeah. there were hundreds of dollars flying out yeah. there. Lots it was of good stuff. Insane. Like, yeah, and then and then uh, Mike and the Rollo booth, they were selling things like crazy and raising money to take kids fishing. Yeah. It was it, good. Fun day. Selling if, the raffle If tickets. you missed it this year, you have to be there next year. Yeah. I had lots sure. of clients come by the store after they went there, and they said it was awesome. Oh, it was oh, a great crazy. trip. Yeah. yeah. And they and they, they, uh, they were focusing on those, uh, you know, the, the, the seminars. Yeah. There's oh, some Bill, good seminars. Bill Kavanaugh gave a seminar on yeah. the whole thing. And uh, then... Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Danny Wade and, 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 and Jerry, and, and and then also Bill Batson did yeah. a thing on a rail rod uh, setup and stuff. Yeah, it was, he's, it was really he's good. a really really cool interesting guy. guy. Yeah, he's, we had him on the show yesterday. It was he's really so great. intelligent and very like, much so like creative. That's that's the word, right? Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And they were selling those Batson kits with the guides and the the rod and the whole thing yesterday. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah. Super hey, nice great guy. text here uh, from uh, Harry in Chula Vista, and he says where. When your favorite kayak, where are your favorite kayak launching places for for fishing and second viewing of wildlife? What do you think, Ron? Where do, where do you like to send people to to, to kayak launch? Boy, in San Diego, they're everywhere. I mean, they you know, really are. The, I mean, it's kind of crazy that that in the South Bay, that that little place we fished where we caught those big corbina yeah that what that's what, what's yeah it? that's pepper park pepper park yeah, yeah that's, that's a good awesome spot. place and you can get out there and catch some bonefish maybe too find and, some ghost and, shrimp and in mission bay i mean you can pretty much launch anywhere, anywhere. yeah anywhere and i love drifting those you know when the tide's coming in i love drifting between those bridges kind of line up with the buoys yeah on either side of the bay and then up by the yacht club there's yeah. lots of little spots I and mean, i know in la and orange county like newport bay the back bay in newport has some great wildlife viewing as well as bonefish and different areas back there i've I, i've got one for each one yeah fiesta island is like the yeah. coolest most unique in san diego yes yeah. fiesta island in mission bay is the the coolest most unique thing to southern california where you can drive onto the sand up to the water right you can't do that anywhere else and, you know and you can make your little camp you have your lawn chair there your car you can go fishing what what 30 feet away yeah uh, literally and that and on that little eelgrass line right along fiesta island it's great just body fishing just one word of advice when you do that and it's so easy to pull your kayak out and launch and super easy just make sure you pull up above the high tide line. <laughs> you, go you gotta know before you go. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the second one for wildlife viewing, our lakes. If, oh sure. If you ever want to see the coolest, you know, from herons to uh, osprey, deer, yeah, deer. You, you literally cats. I've I've gone along the bank and been up on deer thirty feet from me. Yeah. Wow. That close. So I mean, for wildlife yeah, the lakes viewing? for view wildlife viewing. So, so yeah. speaking of wildlife, yeah, um, are you talking about Ava like your I, house or something? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. But uh, well, is the boys it, did move out. They're married. Yeah, yeah. So that, it's, it's it, gotten that, very is civilized. It, is that Jared's middle name? <laughs> yeah, wildlife and and danger. Yeah, Hayden danger. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ava and I went up to Mammoth, and fishing wasn't great. We we're at Lake Mary. Yeah, and uh, all of a sudden we noticed this big old bear. I mean, a big old bear. And he's walking along, 
and he's checking out all the fishermen. He, he, the fishermen would leave their little thing, you know, their little area, and they'd run up to the road, and this bear would go over and hit their uh, tackle boxes. Looking he's for looking food. for peanut butter and jelly yeah. sandwiches, wow. you know. And then he would look in the water around for their stringers. And Are you kidding me? Then he would go to the next person, and I, I'm just watching this bear just have his way with all yeah. these gear. Everybody just stepping aside, right? We're videoing it from our kayaks. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. And the bear gets in the water, and he's looking around this rock to see if there's a stringer of trout there, you know. And I looked over at Ava, and we were so close to him. I go, hey, Ava, how, how fast do you suppose this bear can swim? Yeah. <laughs> well, they can run really fast. Yeah. Yeah. And... and I just That's thought funny. that was crazy. Now, now, and we got some great videos of this bear just taking it and holding a tackle box and shaking it. Yeah, oh, like my he's gosh. trying to find and, out what's inside. Yeah, hey, like hey, any peanut butter, peanut yeah, butter jelly anything, sandwiches yeah. in there. So, so Ava, speaking of Ava, she took some uh, inflatables to Oklahoma for some people, right? Tell well, us about that story. Well, yeah, she went out to visit her cousin and, um, and, she took two I-11s on the plane. Like the inflatable kayak. Yeah, you, you, you check them in his luggage. It, well, and I, you know, as this we, is the bigger one. There's an I-9 and an I-11. That's right. Yeah. And, and so the lady said it was oversized and overweight. And, uh-huh. and so, yeah, we knew that. We Ava did her homework. And yeah. So we paid the $75 to fly him to Oklahoma. And Ava had just these two great kayaks to go paddling around with her. And and they loved them so much, they ended up just buying them. So she didn't bring them home. <laughs> oh, it hell wasn't hell. a trick, though. <laughs> but yeah, so even the I-11, you can check onto a plane, but you just have to pay an oversized, overweight thing. Right. But the I-9, you could check, and it's 50 pounds and not over, I, over oversized. Yeah, the, every airline's different. Every airline's different. And I, I'm not that guy Especially that checks all the details. Yeah. But Ava is, and so you take the measurements. They usually have a, a certain amount of inches yeah. of how sure. deep and how. But it's not that hard. And even if it was seventy five bucks, who cares? That's so cheap to have yeah. your own kayak, to have For your sure. own play toy. It, you just you roll me? it right up, throw it in the rental car, and show away up and you blow go. up. Show yeah. up and blow up. Hey, uh, phones are packed. Let's jump into it, Corey. They are. How about uh, we jump to Irvine and talk to uh, Isman, and uh, maybe Isman can uh, correct me on on how to pronounce his name. Good morning. Morning. It's uh, Esau. Esau. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So um, when it comes down to uh, pulling up to a boiler rock or a kelp bed, well, how's uh, the way you like to position yourself? Oh, good question. Wow, that's that's a great question. Um, you know, it's different. Uh, boiler rocks kind of have a lot of currents and white water and things going on. I call it character. Yeah. Character. There's it builds character. Yes. And uh, so you have to be really cautious. And I've actually been in some areas where uh, the when that surge of the whitewater comes in, it will suck you into it, and then all of a sudden it releases you. So you've really got to spy it out, watch it a little while. And you're doing that anyway because you want to make that right cast of where that you're going to present that bait. So... Um, you, you can get carried away looking for certain things and not watching behind you with swells. So I would, I, I think it's, it's, it's very good to watch, to look, and then to approach yeah. so that you know what you're getting yourself into and how to get out. Corey, you, you approach um, kelp beds and stuff, and you've done this with uh, your MC swim baits a lot. How would you position yourself on a, on a kelp bed, say? Well, like the boiler rock thing, number one, is definite you know, making sure that you're safe, number one, and you can make a long cast and, and do it safely. And you'll learn for the second time you do it, right? And so you learn from experience. But in fishing the kelp, it's so stealthy from a kayak. From a boat, you're you're noisy. Any step and creak and whatever you're doing, the, the kayaks are so quiet that even sometimes the the the, the movement you're making for sea bass, it attracts them sometimes, oh, believe that's, it or not. That's, that's kind does. of funny, yeah, fin this, movement. Yeah, yeah. So as long as you're not, like, making obnoxious pounding, noises. Pounding sounds. That's you don't exactly want to drop that. your pliers on the deck. You the know. cool thing about the kayak is you can be in the kelp, over the kelp, but yet throwing up current 
and bringing your offering from the open ocean and into the kelp. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the way the calicos position themselves is into the current, so they're facing away from you, and you're bringing the offering to them. And it's kind of a, a trick way to do it. It's, it's opposite of what you could do from a boat, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah. So there are options that are totally unique to kayak fishing that are better because they're, the, the approach is complete opposite. Yeah, are stealthy. you in a boat or a kayak, Iceman? I guess we lost them. Yeah, but, yeah. But anyway, that would be from a, from a, from a kayak. But, uh, but from a boat, uh, it depends on whether you're going to anchor, whether you're going to drift and stuff like that. But what you said was really important is that figure out how the fish are feeding. And they're always feeding yeah, with their heads yeah. into the current, right? Well, Corey? it's just imagine a trout in the stream, right? right. So yeah. they're always facing into the current. And, and, well, and that's where things are going to come by. Yeah. So and, if you're going to anchor a boat, you're going to anchor where... Uh, it's up above the structure, up above where the current's going to take your bait to, right? Dave Hansen has, could tell us you all about You mean your saltwater anchoring. guide? Exactly. That, that guy, listen, anchoring up and chumming up fish, he's going to have a lot to say about it. And uh, we've got him on hold. And uh, Dave Hansen, your catch report is sponsored by the Fish Pros of Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. And uh, not only the best, they have the best processing for your fish when your trip returns. Uh, plus, with Fish Pros to market, you can purchase their, fre their fresh fish, their smoked and jerky fish, spices, rubs, their smoked cheese, tuna burgers, poke kit, their ceviche uh, spice kit. Stop by their location in Old Town on Taylor Street, or you can order online at fishermansprocessing.com. And we've been mentioning this for months and weeks and weeks. Be sure you have to make your reservations, and uh, it is a must. Whether you're going next month or next year, give them a call. Don't call them. Text them. You can text them at this number. Just let them know the date you're going and what boat you're on and your name. The and they do, I mean, the the the, the, the process. The fisherman's processing is absolutely the most seamless. incredible, seamless thing. Seamless. Yeah. It's 619-255-3128. And the product, the quality, Woo. how good is it, Ron? Oh, it was unbelievable. We, we did some bluefin yesterday. Oh, it's so good. Oh, and the packaging. Yeah, sounds the delicious. Thick plastic. And... Oh, yeah. Using that five mil. Pay the little extra money, get that five mil. It's worth it. No, yeah, it's for sure. way worth it. Good morning, Captain Dave. Hey, good morning, Ron, Pete. And, uh, Corey, how are you guys today? And, yes, we have a little bit of information about anchoring. You can go over to our website, Your Saltwater Guide. Check that out. But, um, Jay, we got a we had Pete, was there anybody at the, uh, at the tackle days yesterday? Oh, my gosh. There's a few. Like, yeah, thousands. It was great. <laughs> it was great. I heard it was pretty spectacular. Well, that's good. Congratulations to Rick and Doug and everybody else that was involved. Corey, did you sell any bait? Uh, a few, yeah. Definitely. All right. Hey, at, cool. At, that's, at a two-for-one deal. That's awesome. At a two-for-one deal, they absolutely go. And it's not upping the price to, no. to discount it. That's uh, buy two, get one free. Yeah, that was a pretty sensational deal. Well, great. Hey, we're down here on the Golden Gate right now, Pete. We got a uh, Ford Dorado on the boat. Just some left, let a sailfish go. We got a nice striped marlin. It's a beautiful morning down here. But let's talk about what's going on at Catalina because that seems to be the most consistent. It made it through all that wind. There's still a phenomenal amount of bonita on the front side of the island. The calico bass fishing is pretty good. And the boats that tried their hand at rock fishing at Catalina yesterday did very, very well. Catalina is still the most consistent place in Southern California right now. If you want to just go and catch some fish, there seems to be quite a, quite a bit of stuff going on at Catalina. And now we got some nice weather. That bluefin seems to have rebounded a little bit. It's trying to bite out there on Cortez and the Tanner. Still, I know we got hampered by the wind for a couple of days, but... It seems like it bounced back. There's still plenty of bait in the area. That fish will just have some more consistent weather. I think it'll it'll just keep on biting all the way till Christmas. It doesn't seem like it wants to go anywhere. And then as along the coast, there's still a little bit of calico bass to catch. But the main focus right now is rockfish, rockfish, rockfish with that major jump in the water temperature. But that's okay. It's fall time. That's what we're supposed to be doing this time of year in Southern California. There's still absolutely no reason to not go fishing. You want to get out there, 
call Ron, get a kayak, go fish, go do something. Just get out on the water and go fishing. Yeah, it's good stuff. And fishdope.com, it'll keep you on the fish. That's for sure. 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code hookup now. Lowercase, no space, hookup now. Your $20 code. And Dave, how do we find out about anchoring, about fishing, about all kinds of different videos that you have on your saltwater guide? Where do you do that? Well, thanks, Steve. We have 200 and, or 480 how-to videos covered to everything you need to know about fishing in Southern California. We got a great deal going on right now. Holiday package available. Give me a call at 949-374-0786. We'll get you set up, or you can go directly to the website and look at our holiday gift package we got. And uh, thank you very much for letting me be on the show. I'm going to get back to Marlin fishing here. All right, have fun down there, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. Appreciate that, Dave, very much. All right, Corey, well, you got one good one, huh? I'm from their texters. They text yeah. the show through the via the Let's Talk Hookup app, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, I do. Actually, I wanted to let the listeners know, Pete, that yeah. uh, that was sponsored by Terrafin. And uh, temperature chlorophyll and more, chlorophyll and more, Terrafin uh, is a professional's choice for depend- dependability and accuracy. And now with Terrafin Mobile, you can uh, download the latest charts on your iPad, iPhone, or Android device. Check terrafin.com, and it's definitely something you want to have. I know there's been some bluefin within 30 miles of every harbor now. It's, it's definitely terrafin comes in And it's in November. Handy. Right? Yeah. I know it. Yeah. So here, here's a text, uh, Pete. It says, good morning, guys. Question for Ron. How is the resale value for the older i11s? And I want to upgrade to an Outback and wondering how I might get... Uh, from I-11 and upgraded and into a new steering kit. And that's Craig in Ocean Beach. Oh, the new steering kits. We've got a bunch of them. And uh, we've been putting them on for free now. Uh, and this is like on the inflatable. The, 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 the original I-11, uh-huh. before they came out with the iTrex 11, uh-huh. uh, the original I-11 has a twist and stow rudder on it. Mm-hmm. And with years of folding, it... it it's just not smooth, and it it's not a very efficient rudder shape. Uh, it, it's okay, yeah. But once you put the new rudder, the one that comes on the iTrex, we have a kit for that. It's a real easy thing to do. You just bring your boat down. We'll install it for you. And uh, we've been calling all the people on our list, just making them aware that this is available and i have them now in stock okay uh, gobs of them and it turns your old i11 into uh, a completely different boat all right it and you'll it... put them in there yeah, yeah 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 we have a bunch of them the guys you know, the other thing too that we haven't talked about are these these salty bags that you brought uh for cory and myself that was uh, a surprise to me too yeah so you got a bunch of those that you're going to blow out right these well, are great waterproof bags. I, it, I, I went on that trip, and I'm like going, God, where do I put all these boots and pillows and all these things on the long range right. trip? It's kind of new to me, you know. And so I, I, I borrowed a bag from Jared, you know, the Salty Crew guys, and and I, I open it up. I go, man, this thing gets big, and yeah. it can be small. And so I brought those in so you could see them, and they're amazing. Yeah. And uh, we've got them at the store, and we'll have more. I mean, I, do, I just have a few. Yeah. But we're going to stock up cool. because they're really an efficient way to Very get your so. backpack waterproof and a duffel bag that's waterproof. Ron, whether you're a surfer, a fisherman, a kayaker, an outdoorsman, period, right. to have something that's waterproof. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, I was blown Pretty away. Cool. Because when, you, when you're just staging to get somewhere, you're always putting your bags down. Well, Everything's wet in yeah. our environment. <laughs> wet and sandy. Yeah, and I, not in this bag though. Whether That's you're cool whether you're hopping on your own private boat or right. getting on the San Diego in the morning, yeah. everything's damp and dewy. Or yeah, I got to tell you, things are get. I mean, the the way they design things now, it, everything's just getting better. Yeah. We're so lucky. Oh, it's so cool. Hey, uh, Robert Doyon from Canyon Country said that he called Vessel Assist, and they will come out for mechanical failure, not just because you're tired. Hey. So, but if you're in That's trouble, great. maybe my, the Coast Guard would my come My Mirage out, right? drive's having a little bit of trouble. Yeah, there you go. I'm having a mechanical failure. Yeah, the engine's not go. working. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you're the engine. Oh, <laughs> That's great. Good stuff. Hey, we're going to be 
be right back with more good stuff when we return on Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. All of us at the American Angler family want to express appreciation to our regular passengers that fish with us year after year and to the new anglers that came out this last season. We realize how precious your vacation time is, and we are truly grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us. It's important that your experience is memorable from the moment you call the office to the time you step off the boat. Hi, I'm Lori. Call me at the office, 619-223-5414, or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. Come fishing with the American Angler family and make a memory. This is Captain Dwayne Diego, Pinnacle Sport Fishing. Visual signs are one of our most important aspects to our charter fishing business. It's the reason myself and all of our crew all wear Costa sunglasses. With advanced polarization technology, Costa is designed to help cut through the sun's glare while providing enhanced color and comfort to help you see more fish. Costa was founded over 35 years ago by a group of fishermen wanting high-performance lenses for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your pursuit. Check them out at costasunglasses.com. Swordfish season is on, and now's the time to get your gear. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. Daiwa has been making great saltwater reels for decades, and their lineup of electric reels are fantastic. The Daiwa Seaborg, with its mega torque motor, has the power to bring in that giant swordfish. And when it comes to flying a kite, the Daiwa Tanacom is the answer, and so affordable. Both Daiwa reels are in stock now at Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Visit us at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Top anglers know the best hooks are made by Gamakatsu. But did you know Gamakatsu also makes amazing tackle storage solutions like the G-Box 3200 reversible utility case for easy tangle-free jig storage? Check out the Gamakatsu Spring Lock Spinner. It helps give swim baits additional flash to entice those bites. Gamakatsu also makes a line of fishing pliers, clothing, and more. For the complete lineup, check Gamakatsu.com for your local tackle dealer. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate. It's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying where everyone knows your name. Well, truly at Ranch Leonero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Ranch Leonero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-2252. 1-800-646-Baja. And RanchoLeonero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Leonero. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up. And, man, just having so much fun. Ready I'm, to go to Ranch Lanier off that right? spot, right, Ryan? I know. Yeah. Doesn't just, that sound beautiful? How yeah. does he do that? He yeah. just he, he just hypnotized like, me. Yeah, he just, now I'm thinking of Baja. Yeah, there you go. go. I already have the margarita in hand. <laughs> yeah. And I got the Hobie kayaks down there. Oh, I was thing, thinking yeah. about just fishing that, that down that little that little beach there going up. Oh, oh, yeah. Those little rock spots. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Hey, Bart Hall's on the line. Good morning, Bart. That's someone who's been around Yeah, he likes it. You know. Who's that other guy? Oh, Ron. Hi, Ron. Ron. Yeah. Hey. Good morning. Nice so, to you see know, you yesterday at Tackle Day. It was, wasn't that a great day? Congratulations to Doug and Rick and Frank and Holy and uh, a lot of Carl. People. You know, it was a wonderful experience, and I had a great time. Yeah. I, it sounded like you were having a great time, too. You guys laugh a lot when you're on the radio. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Other than being freezing cold in the more early in the morning there, I, <laughs> I underdressed. I should have dressed like I was going to Mammoth or something. Cause That's right. In the shade hey. there. Was like, <laughs> hey, I was wearing a short sleeve shirt, you know? So, yeah, I know. So, you're so. tough. You're tougher than I me. Know. I'm a wimp. I have admit it. I live in Southern California too long, so it's like... I gotta get cold when it's like fifty. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I Ron who started the day talking about uh, a kayak with uh, sails on it, and it got me thinking back to forty-four years ago when a young man named Ron Lane was and his wife Debbie were selling uh, sailboats at the hall shows. 
in San Diego. <laughs> that was a, that was a, that was funny. I yeah. mean, I tell that story all the time. But you and yeah. your dad walk in and go, "We think we got a, a place you can sell some sailboats, Ron." And I go, "Really? What?" And he, "A fishing show." And I go, "A what? A fishing show?" Yeah. We well, sold more boats at that fishing show you you, you got me to go to <laughs> than we did at any of the sailboat shows. It was Isn't like crazy? it was like the people that go fishing also want to go sailing, also want to go surfing, also want to do kayak. I mean, well, they're it's outdoor the same, enthusiasts. That's right. Yeah. So his clientele at those shows is the same guy that buys all that outdoor stuff. So I got to tell you, I was a sucker from then on. It's like I say, say to Bart, Bart, you just tell me when and where I'm there. It's just a great well, show. There, there, there's another one-liner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I did it again. <laughs> hey, I, got to, I was thinking, too, now how, many, how many inflatables do you have? How many different kinds? Oh, there's, right now there's, there's six. Yeah, they, they, they even have, have a, the Eclipse need, one. We need to have a new show up and blow up. Especially down there at Delmar, where we decide, where we blow them all up and see who can do which one the fastest. I'll have to, I'll have to come up with a prize for the you're, fastest you're, blow you're, up. You're talking my language now. I, I, I really liked yeah. it when you brought the pool into my booth, and and uh, I, I won a hundred bucks from Steve Pinard, which I which I donated to Friends of Rollo, oh, if Bart would get in the kayak oh. in the pool. And, and he, he did. did. And he did. He did. Always always great seeing you, Bart, and always great uh, hearing from you. Thanks a lot for the call this morning, and looking forward to the shows coming up for sure. Hey, uh, Corey, let's jump back in the phones. All right, let's do it. How about uh, Hills? Hills calling from Ventura. Thanks for joining us this morning. Let's talk hookup, Hills. Good morning, uh, Ron and Pete and Corey. Um, thanks for taking my call. Um, uh, Doug from Montebello had that question about um, vessel assist and boats and kayak. And I just wanted to say up in my area, man, Gaviota, be careful. That is uh, the standard winds will blow you way out to sea, and it's happened to a lot of people. Oh, so time. there's that one. Yeah. And, then, oh, and the winds switch up there fish. just at the drop of a hat. I mean, they yeah. just like all of a sudden they're they're it's, it's offshore. Yeah. <laughs> but but yet it's a very safe, like but, protected co- coestline like La Jolla Shores is. Kinda. Oh god, yeah. it's great up there. Yeah. We we kayaked on it's, that sailing it's like a wind, from Go ahead. Hills. It's like a wind a wind tunnel there. The northwest yeah. wind goes down the canyon of the one oh one and it's like concentrated right at Gaviota Beach. It, it's 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 insane. We've tried to camp there, and you can't because your tent, all the tent poles break by morning. And you're, you're <laughs> yeah. underneath the thing. But, um, but I wanted to ask Ron about he, uh, he's been fishing the Brawla rig. Uh, thanks to Brawla for that, man. I'm, I can't wait to try it. Um, my question is, uh, one thing, is your pound test um, off the bottom of the ring the same and then how crazy are people that they would put an eddy rig for the sinker below that? Never even thought about that. Huh. Wow. Well, I did on the, on the line coming from the bottom of the hook, the circle hook, or I mean the ringed hook. So what was your main line to the, the circle? I was, I was on 80 pounds. 80 pounds. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and then from the, the ring to the bottom. 40 is 40 but that's, because you want that kind but, of a breakaway sinker no that was just because well yes and no uh usually usually you lose your weight your, yeah. your sinker because when they bring it over the rail it gets caught underneath uh, and it pulls off okay so i'm not sure how i i don't know enough about it to know what you know the designated line should be but but, i think that's kind of pretty common you know 30 40 pound test so i was just more aware of it when i caught another fish doing that and didn't lose my weight but i did on the first one i lost the weight and i don't know where it lost it but it was 40 pound which is maybe light i don't have to ask the professor hey chris will know yeah chris will know hey thanks a lot for the call this morning Uh, nice to hear from you hill you have a great text i do it kind of piggybacks on the same thing and this comes from uh uh sean in oceanside and he says uh, hey guys uh i'd love to see a pic of the drop 
shot rig on the website, uh, but more importantly, uh, what do you mean by pinning the sardine from the bottom to the top? He says, thanks. Okay, so I, I'm glad he asked important. me that. It this is, is important. important. No, no, this, this, is, this is really important. And uh, the, way, the way Chris told me is, you know, he has to tell me instructions very specifically because he knows I can't remember anything, yeah. and he knows that I'm going to screw it you up. You have that same disease I do. Yeah, so, <laughs> so he says, Ron, take, take your rig over to the bait receiver and put the weight in Oh, in the well. To the bait in the well. well. In one of the little captive ones. Put yeah. your bait in the one next to it. Turn the bait over in, in the water, in the well, and start with that V, you know, the V underneath their jaw. The underneath their gill plate. And yeah. slid it, slide the hook in there. And you have to do it in such a way that when you come through that bony, that bony part, that you're pinning right through that bony part. And to get that circle hook through there is kind of difficult. Yeah. You'll need to put pressure on it. Yeah. So you'll need to reinforce the back of the bait's head or you break its neck. Most importantly, <laughs> listening to this, all you want to do is make sure you pin the mouth shut. So on the drop, it's not flailing and, and right. has its mouth open. Right, and stays on the hook, too. And, and stays and on stays the hook. stays on the hook, because that's kind of the... The, the other thing, too, is you quicker. don't, you don't want to go too far, because if you go too far, you're going to brain them and you kill it. You need to get Matt back in here. Yeah. You need to have yeah, Matt yeah, yeah. from the San Diego and Gavin. Yeah. Oh, we're going Pacific to. Queen. Oh, yeah. They, so, they were so back. good. Yeah. Yeah, and and I love that he's asking that question because it is, it is. a new way. Yeah, yeah. But I'm the Practice guy that just it. learned it, yeah. you know. And so, I, how can I give instructions? Yeah. I, but, I mean, but it worked first time, yeah. and it was appropriate because my bait was down there quicker. Yep. My bait was in the target zone. Yep. And it was at the right depth. They called out the depth. My my. My rod, my reel had the measurements on it, so I knew where I was. Ron, yeah. 125 pounds proven. Yeah, for sure. Hey, um, <laughs> Barely. Uh, got another great text from Corey in Escondido. By the way, Corey says that Kevin Nakata won the casting cost tennis again. Imagine that. Yeah. Kevin. Kevin Good the job, Sea Kevin. Samurai. Yeah. Ron, a Hobie looks like a ton of fun, but I'm concerned about weather. I'll be able to handle and whether I'll be able to handle it. Does fast lane kayaks or do test drives or rent? Can I try it out? Be sh to make sure that I can do this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. And, yes, you can do it. Number don't, one. And yes, you can. Oh, you can. You can yeah. do. It. Anybody can do it. It's yeah. great. And and once you try it, you're going to be hooked. Yeah. Yeah. But, Hook but, up. But yeah, I mean, just go down a fast lane. Talk to them. Well, and call if, in, and, yeah. and we're we're planning to have demo day. Some kind and, of a demo day. And we I can tell and what now, boat who? you you know we can tell what boat you're headed towards. Yeah. We've been outfitting these things for 20 years. Yeah. And, and we'll know where what model will be right for you. And if it, if it takes putting you in one to get you hooked, I will do yeah. that. Yeah, if but you're just a serious call. buyer, yeah. For yeah, sure. just call. Yeah, they'll take care of you. Hey, let's jump into the phones, Corey. Let's do it. How about uh, Rich? Rich calling from Bradley. Appreciate you joining us this morning, Rich. Morning, guys. Um, and the stories about the bluefin drop shot kind of brought up some questions for me about the um, because I've got a ton of, of confidence in freshwater drop shot, but the, the details being different because of the, uh, the ringed hook made me think about the uh, surf fishing drop shot that you use for uh, a fluke for, for halibut. And I'm wondering maybe oh, yeah. Corey could maybe add some details of how much different that is and difference in hooks. And do you use uh, basically the same rigging as you would for freshwater or using the same one you would for um for a bluefin, but just uh, downscaled with your hardware. Yeah, I know that that's a lot to digest right there, Rich. Uh, the freshwater drop shot in is usually a smaller hook through the nose of the bait and, and making it dance and do crazy things. The surf fishing drop shot, I use a legit size, uh, like a five inch uh, slug style with a five inch Gamakatsu extra wide gap, or not an extra wide gap, but a uh, swim bait style hook unweighted. So it's a very large hook, and it's directly to the line. And the reason you do that is every little twitch you give your rod transmits right to the hook. And so you're making a dance and do things that way. A circle in front of that would change the action, and maybe not for the worse, but you just have to be aware that, uh, of what you're doing. And the reason it works for 
The blue fin is you're getting it down right to the depth. Yeah. That bait is still wiggling it in front of them, wiggling it like crazy. And it it amazes me that you're using a circle hook on a drop shot. Yeah. And think about it, like you're limiting the distance you're allowing that hook to get into the mouth, but you're still hooking them, and maybe it hooks them even better. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It was uh, when I when I insp- I was really curious about that. In fact, I cut the hook off when I got it off the line to look at it. So I remembered the knots and the size of the line. You know, and I, yeah. and I, I yeah. still have the hook. And I'm going looking at that fish and that little hook kind of blew my mind. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It did yeah. because it's not a big hook, like a one or a two o. And there was there was no set it. There was no no warning. Let's... It just. Bam! You were yeah. on. Did, did you have it in gear when? Oh, yeah, yeah. You had it in gear. So you fish it in gear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. When you fishing drop shot on the freshwater, do you fish it in gear? So you you would. Yeah, you yeah. would. And 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 the whole trick to that in in freshwater is you're letting your weight go to the bottom. Right. You're using a very light, little, tiny, just almost right. a split shot amount of weight to get right. it down. And with it resting on the bottom, then allows you to get uh, slack to your offering, and you and you twitch your rod and make it dance. Yeah. Can I tell you? It is not a style I'm into. It's okay. it's just it. I know. It's so finessey that. It, it, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's a style I'm really into because I'm a really lousy freshwater bass fisherman, <laughs> no, come on. and and I can catch a lot of fish on the drop shot. No, you will yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's so finessey that it. Uh, I like to cover water and, yeah. and get a reaction bite, whether yes. it's on a crankbait yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And but if it's, you're not getting bit and you want to get you do, bit, you man, will. that drop shot rig in freshwater for bass, it is, works. it's deadly. And it's because you're, you've are you got it 12 or 24 inches off the yeah. bottom. They've You put literally put it right in their view. Yeah. And, they and you just twitch it in gear, and then they just consume it. You just don't want to over twitch it. It's just like, you look at it in the water and, and yeah. see what you're doing. It's yeah. a fun technique. Yeah, it is, for sure. I have a text that's okay, actually go ahead. along with, yeah. with the, go this, Pete, if you don't mind. It's uh, for Ronnie. says, do you ever take your kayaks for largemouth and if so, where in SoCal? And it comes from Jeff in Huntington Beach. No. I, I'm a saltwater guy I, and I, I just... I I would I want to I just don't know the spots and I don't go a lot. Yeah, you know? I love doing it. I brought this up selfishly because yeah. the kayak in freshwater is something that not a lot of people do. Yep. It's something that our lakes are totally like designed for. Mm-hmm. You don't have to launch a huge boat to get in those areas. You can paddle a kayak two, three miles, no problem. Sure. Oh, easy, yeah. But you approach the fish again from a different angle, quieter. You get the bites that a boat can't get, and you're doing it with ease. You're doing it with a simple kayak. You're putting in the water and having a great time. And like we mentioned earlier, you come up on the wildlife just as stealthy mm-hmm. as you do the fish. No, right. it's really and, right. and the deer come in so close. It's beautiful. <laughs> and bears. And, <laughs> and bears. We all fish Barrett Lake. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I know I've I've got a lot of clients that are just psycho about that place. Jeff, Jeff yeah. from Huntington Beach, I will say nothing else. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, uh, one more text here. Dave, uh, Big Dave from Ladera Ranch actually has a, a comment and a, and a good a good question, too. Uh, he says, I was told that you have to have a net when fishing in a kayak. I bought a collapsible net and keep it in the hull with access and behind the seat in my hatch on the kayak. Also take it out. I also take it out when paddling around to scoop trash out of the water, which is a great suggestion. I've done that before on small boats where you just you just it doesn't have to be out. It just has to be on the boat to right. be legal. And then he also has he says uh, my kayak weighs seventy five pounds, and there, is there a recommendation for a roof rack that I can easily load on my Explorer? Mo- most racks will will do seventy five pounds. Yeah. In fact, and you sell Yakima, really cool racks, yeah, right? Yeah. And and most of those are at one hundred and sixty pounds. Yeah. You know that's that's their limit. And so a couple of kayaks on top of a roof rack is fine. But you know everybody wants lighter these days. Yeah. And so Hobie reacted to lighter, and they came up with this. The new Lynx. The Lynx is amazing. Oh, it's so Super light. Super stable. And when you put how, on, how how much does the Lynx weigh? It's 45 pounds. And how much does a Outback weigh? 
Uh, close to 90. 90. And how much does a, a pro angler 12 weigh? 110. 110. So get, wow. that kind of gives you an example of how light that lynx is. Yeah, when you, when you put on so a is pro that angler, with you got to be sneaky. You so is that lynx? Tricks. So that's 45 pounds with the Mirage Drive in it? No. The uh-uh. lynx. That's just the bare boat. The hull. And those are all bare boat type of the hulls. Right. That's what bare boat weights. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. And, and they load easier the better you get at it. Mm-hmm. And what I mean better you get at it, the more technique you use. Yeah. And anybody that is having trouble, there's so many YouTube videos of how to do these things. And you know what it comes down to? Geometry. Yeah, and and understanding does. where the weight should be. That's right. And yeah. it's an easy, you can do it with a one-handed lift. Yeah. One, and once you have the right positioning, you can, yeah. if you have the right positioning, it is so simple to do. Yeah. And we, it's then they're stackable. Oh, well, the Lynx is really yeah, easy. I mean, Lynx, yeah. when we first got them, we sold 20 of them the first weekend we yeah, got them. I remember. And we, uh, we had the open house out front, and Ava and my wife, Debbie, were putting them on top of their little cars by themselves, you know, showing just how demoing. gals can go put two of them on and stack them and go. And it was just, I'm going, this is Amazing. good. Because if if you can put a kayak on top of a car as easily as a stand up paddleboard, yes, you're gonna probably pick the kayak because you For can sure. sit down and cover some ground. Yeah. So uh, let's try and sneak in one more call let's here. Let's do it real fast here. How about Mike? Mike calling from Rosemead. Appreciate you joining us, Mike. Hey, good. Thanks for picking up my line. Hey, um, I got into something that's very basic. Why don't people try and practice on dead bait floating in the bait well? Um, you know, with circle hooks and all that, and practice, practice, practice will make it perfect. But it's hard when they're uh, trying to grab the bait that's very lively and then turn it upside down and hook it a certain way with their circle hooks. I mean, it, it only makes common sense just to practice on a dead bait. And then the other thing there, Ron, is uh, why don't you recommend uh, carrying a, a backup paddle on your float tubes? I'm uh, not a float tube, on your, on your um, kayak. I mean, I, I've never heard anybody say uh, having a backup paddle. Oh, all, all of the, that's a good question. Hey, all of the Hobies come with a paddle. Yeah, a backup paddle. Well, yeah, backup or primary. I mean, you can paddle if you want. It just, to me, once I pedal it, uh, I don't hardly ever use the paddle. And, and boats come with it. They have a place for them on, the, on all of our kayaks. And I think that's a great suggestion. You should always have a backup why not? Why wouldn't you? I mean, that's seamanship. A little redundancy is good. You don't want to be out, out at La Jolla on an offshore wind without a paddle. I mean, yeah. What, yeah, right? yeah. I can think of a couple of one-liners that, for that one. That for sure. Hey, um, real quick question from Jeff here. What is the max weight limit on a pro angler? Max so weight. So 12 or 14. Like how how big a person? How, can yeah, go how much it? weight could you put in it? How 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 large of a person? Well, that's that's interesting because the Pro Angler fourteen has a six hundred pound capacity. Holy man! The, the Pro Angler twelve has a five hundred pound capacity. That's so huge. there you go. And the Outback has a four hundred and twenty five pound capacity. So you could put a lot of stuff on it and, and, and some. Big guys. With a big either dude. one of those. Yeah. Well, that, that's funny. When guys come in and they look at the pro angler and these, there's these giant men that are, you know, 6'5", 300 pounds. You're not describing Bart, are you? Yeah, Bart. Yeah, Bart was in a Bart pro angler. No one. problem. Yeah. But I was at the ICAST show and there was a man that was seven feet tall and he weighed like 300 plus. And he got in one? No, he's... He's a kayak fisherman. He's like a, a professional kayak fisherman. Yeah, and he has a website. And to look at him standing up in a pro angler, it just makes it look like yeah. And wow. that's the thing about the pro anglers is you can stand in them too. Yeah, you it can just cracked me up too, if you want. Yeah, and yeah. he's got a funny video. One time he was casting and he hooked the rod in the back and he casted the rod and threw it away. Oh my lord! <laughs> it's just crazy. it's hysterical. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, hey, we're gonna be right back. We're gonna find out who's won this full day trip on the San Diego to Seaforth. When we return on the Let's Talk Like About the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Your vacation bucket list can't be completed without visiting the Katmai Lodge, Alaska this summer. A world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. Get in the action fishing for all five species of Pacific salmon. King, sockeye, chum, coho, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout. 
Arctic Grayling and Dolly Varden, both in the Alagnac and nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fly fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in, ensuring your days are fish filled while you enjoy freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, enjoy fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon. Delicious dinner prepared by the lodge's exceptional chef. Take a quick fly out trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world renowned bear watching. And check out our trout fishing specials at katmai.com. That's K A T M A I.com. Katmai.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, CalSTAR. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the CalSTAR West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend CalSTAR at fine tackle stores everywhere. It's time. Time for the Power Pro 30 Second Seminar. I like catching big fish and I like smaller reels too. How do I make sure that I have the capacity to land the big one? I fill my reels with Power Pro Max Quattro. It's 25% thinner than standard Power Pro, so you get more line on that small reel. Power Pro has a complete series of highly effective lines, including the brand new Power Pro Depth Hunter Offshore with different colors every hundred feet. Perfect for flat fall fishing. Want to learn more? Check PowerPro.com. Cast Tour is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips for decades. Whether it's a fishing trip or a family vacation, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Man, it's such a fun show, Ron, and Ron's got the uh, coin in hand. We're going to yeah. find out who's won, it out, won this full-day trip on the Liberty Go. I mean, on the Here we San go. Diego. The, okay. pres- the pressure. Sorry. Right? All right, a caller, and today the caller is Mike from Rosemead wins the full-day trip on the San Diego. All right, congratulations, yeah. Mike. That's great. We'll send you a certificate, and you can go fishing with... Uh, Booger and uh, Matt and the what gang a cool on the deal, San Diego right? out of And use the fishing. dropper. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the drop shot. The guy that the, came up. The brawler rig. The brawler rig. Yeah. There you go. So, all right, Ron. They'll know so, more about it than I do. Of course, Fastlane Kayaks closed every Sunday because that's family day, right? Yep. Yeah, but uh, Monday or actually Sunday and Monday are closed. Right now. Yeah, yeah. right now. But uh, Tuesday through Saturday, how do we find you? We're right there across the street from SeaWorld. Dana, right. Dana Landing Marina. Right next to Dana Landing Market. That's right. I call, yeah. it, I call it home base of fun. Yeah, is, right next is, to the Dana Launch Ramps. Oh, yeah, with all those. The, Lots that's of such stuff. a fun place. We're Lots always fun. watching fish come and, in. And, and you have Hobie kayaks. You have Salty Crew gear. You have great clothing. Stand-up paddle Stand-up boards. Stand-up paddle boards, paddles. You have oh, some wait, great deals paddles. on some we paddles, We got a too. great deal on paddles. Oh, my God. Like the best paddle we've ever used right. for a stand-up paddle. If you want a great deal on the best paddle ever, Get them while they're hot. Yeah, we have a super deal on paddles. Yeah, like beyond super deal. So go check it out. Thanks, Ron. Great to have you. And uh, we'll look forward to having you back out on the water. And, Corey, thanks for being in here today. We sure appreciate all you do. Thanks to JP for manning the phones and the board there. We sure appreciate him. And we sure appreciate Adam for all he does on the Let's Talk Hookup app. And we'll be back next Saturday. Captain Benny Florentino from Coastal Charters. He's going to be here talking some fishing. I'll bet he'll be talking about that AFCO coastal trip down to Baja, too. And then next Sunday, Captain Chauncey. Priel from the CJ up out of Channel Island is going to be here what a cool talking show. all kinds of good stuff. That's next Saturday and Sunday, 7 to 9 a.m. We'll see you right back here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Hookup app.